Ladies and gentlemen, whenever humans interact, statements are made, opinions are formed, and debate is thus born. This is the Great Debaters Contest. I am your host, Esperancia Kapanga. And I am Chris Buru. Our intellectual themes today seek to answer one simple question. Is increase in population detrimental to the fight against climate change? Proposing this motion, we have Baringo High School. Opposing this motion, we have Uzalendo School. Is more actually Maria? Proposer number one, you have three minutes. When philosophers said, when misfortunes come, they don't come as single battalion, as single spice, but they come in battalions. I'm Derek Mongare from Baringo High School. He had proposed to the motion that says, increase in population is detrimental to fight against climate change. Well, what is increase in population? And what is, climate, what is climate change? Well, I'd like to save your troubles for those who, who geography high, back in high school was a headache. Increase in population is the long-term alteration of our weather patterns affecting our planet. So what does increase in population got to do with the climate change? Well, there is an increase in population. In the past 50, just 50 years, the world's population has increased up to 7.4 billion. According to statistics carried out by the UN, it indicates that in about 2050, the world's population will be 9.5 billion people. When there is an increase in population, we have what we call the global warming. More people will be using the, what you call the vehicles, they'll be, using, they'll be producing energy, they'll be doing all such stuff, just which leads to global warming. This 7.4 bi 7 billion people need to be fed, clothed, and kept warm, all requiring a large amount of energy. These bodies also produce vast quantities of waste products, consequently leading to demand for energy. And production of waste, this leads to a significant producers of greenhouse gas that affects the climate change. When there is an increase in human population, more, more fuel gases, are, more, more fuel is mined. And there is more burning of fossil fuels just to power off their increasingly mechanist lifestyles. When there is more people, this means there's more demand for oil, gas, coal, and other fuel mined. When burned up, they spew dangerous gases, which produce, which are mainly the carbon four oxide, which is the major gas that leads to global warming. That is, it leads to trapping of warm air and inside like a greenhouse. And you all know the effects of, of the greenhouse effects. So, in back 2009, David Wheeler, one of the weather pattern researchers, stated that when there is an increase in population, we have what we call, there will be more driving of vehicles, there will be more using of, there will be more industries, there will be more that is driving of vehicles, which will apparently lead to exposure, which will apparently lead to emission of gases. These gases are dangerous to the, to the environment, which will later on lead to the climate change. Thank you. First proposal, you have three minutes. My name is Ruth Akumu from Uzalendo School, and I'm ready to stand and oppose the motion that says increase in population is detrimental to fight against climate change. First, I'd like to say that it's not only we cannot continue to be confided against uh, on this increase in population alone, saying that it is the only thing that fight that. Uh, uh, that is detrimental to fight against this climate change. There are also other factors that are fighting against, that are detrimental to fight against climate change. For example, I like to talk about global warming. This is increasing the pressure of the Earth's atmosphere that is caused by the greenhouse effect. These greenhouse gases that act as a mirror reflecting back into the Earth's part of its radiation, which would otherwise be lost into the space. The main gas that is given off is always carbon four oxide. This is not necessarily that it is only from the increase in population, but other human activities that lead to this increase, the increase this rate of carbon four oxide into the atmosphere. Like the research had shown that a molecule of carbon four oxide can remain in the atmosphere for up to 200 years. Also, this global warming changes among the patterns of uh, it changes the amount and patterns of precipitation that leads to an increase in the frequency, duration, and the intensity of the extreme weather events such as floods. There is drought, heat waves, and tropical storm, hence affecting the climate change in adverse. Secondly, I like to talk about volcanic eruptions. When volcanic eruption occurs, sulfur four oxide is released into the atmosphere. The gas forms, uh, when the gas is released, it, for, uh, it combines with oxygen to form a bright layer within the stratosphere. 
The layer forms formed reflects the solar radiation of the sun, hence decrease, temp uh, is decrease, decrease in temperature. This one is evident in the, it was evident in Philippines where Mount Pinatubo erupted resulting to a decrease in temperature by 0.8 degrees in 1993. This eruption led to a release of 20.4 million of sulfur for oxide, hence affecting the climate adversely. Thirdly, I'd like to talk about change in the orbital characteristic. This is the change in the character of the Earth's orbital around the sun, and its rotation can significantly affect the way in which the energy from the sun is distributed by the season and by latitude. This is known as the Milakonvich effect, and it generates changes which are cyclic in nature. Comparison of the changes predicted by astronomical calculations, which observed climate records, suggest that this mechanism has played a part in inducing the shift from ice age to interglacial conditions on time scales in to, uh, of 10,000 to 100,000 years. That is why I will strongly stand and say that it is not only this increase in population, there are other factors that I've just mentioned. So we cannot continue to be confided in this increase in population alone, while there are other things that are greatly uh, affecting the climate adversely. And I rest my case there. Second proposal, you have three minutes for rebuttal. Here I am, strong as stand to propose the motion, increase population is the matter to the fight against climate change. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, all of you will agree with me that most of our world governments are, are channeling their funds and resources to control the human population in the whole world. Why should we control the human population instead of investing in other areas like agriculture and such, increase in population will lead to the setting up of more industries. And the setting up of more industries would mean emission of more gases, greenhouse gases, to the atmosphere. And what are the effects of emitting these gases to the atmosphere? One of them is unpredictable weather patterns, whereby the weatherman will be promising a farmer from Marigat, that is a place in Baringo County, one of the arid areas in Baringo County, that is in Kenya, that you plant your maize, your maize will nourish and you harvest them in time. Then after a month, the rain ceases. What will the farmer do? Just but accrue losses. The other effect of climate change is the loss of the treasured human lives due to the encroaching desertification. This is what it is. Due to encroaching desertification, which is a case of the climate change due to emission of this gas to the atmosphere, we lose our human lives. Just imagine of the 1984 Ethiopian farm mine, whereby we lost 284,000 people due to the climate, which was directly attributable to the climate change. The, 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 the UN has proven beyond reasonable doubt that the main contributor of climate change is industrial affluence, whereby 66% of the, of the pollutants of the atmosphere are from industrial effluence. This is in form of the gases emitted from the industries and such. The growing union population means that the growing union population means that we we'll have to set up more industries to feed this growing union population. We have to get them more we have to get them more machinery, electronics, and other needs just to satisfy their needs so that we can meet their needs. And setting up of these industries would mean that we have to, we will be emitting more gases, industrial effluence to the atmosphere. In the course of the 21st century, the human, the global population in the whole world rose from 1.6 billion to 6.1 billion people. And during this time, emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse effects, and other greenhouse gases which lead to the greenhouse effects grew 12-fold. Do you know what we mean by 12-fold? It means that it grew twice, three times, four times, up to the 12th time. Just imagine of that. It will it is detrimental to the fight against climate change. And with the world population expected to surpass 9 billion from the current 7.4 billion in the next course of about a half a century to 9 billion, that will be about, at about 2050, the global population will be about 9 billion. And this will only serve to frustrate our environmentalists just but worried and frustrated in their fight against climate change. In conclusion, as I rest my case, I beg, I persuade, I urge my opponents to come and join me in, in proposing this motion. This is because my voice is the voice of reason. My voice is no noise, and my voice is the voice of reason. Thank you. Second opposer, you have three minutes for cross-examination. My name is Dennis Mwangi from Uzalendo School, and I would like to boldly oppose the motion that says increase in population is detrimental to fight against corruption. First and foremost, I would like to 
attack my opponents here who said that due to increase in population, there's emission of carbon dioxide and other gases in the atmosphere. Can you elaborate to us what are some of the side effects of this carbon dioxide emitted in the atmosphere? Increase in population is not only detrimental to fight against climate change. My first point says that variation, there's variation in atmo atmospheric carbon dioxide. There's a great relationship between carbon dioxide and climate. When you look at when carbon dioxide increases in the atmosphere, there is high climate change. This is due to temperature increase. For instance, when there's decrease in carbon dioxide, there's also decrease in temperature. I do compare this scenario with, it is like when you say that you want to go to Mombasa, it is not by a train only that your presence can be represented in Mombasa. You can use a train, you can use a motorbike and also aeroplane. It is not just a matter of saying that I'm going to Mombasa by a train. You can use either aeroplane, you can use either motorbike to access, to have your presence represented in Mombasa. It is not just a matter of train that your presence can be represented in Mombasa. And my second point is variation in solar output. This was, this was a, a, a statistics that was measured by satellites in space in the early 1980, shared a decrease of 0.1 solar energy coming to the air, to earth. And also it is predicted that change in solar output will lower the global average temperature by 0.5%. Add to by that point, it's about extreme temperatures. When the temperature increases, I know some of you knows what the, the side effect of temperatures. When the temperature increases, the cover, the vegetation in the atmosphere, the, in the ground, there's what we call dried up. It becomes dry. And due to that, the soil is left bare and leads to soil erosion. And that's why I'm boldly opposing the motion that says increases population is detrimental to fight against climate. Thank you. Proposers have been asked to make a comment on the electric cars and magnetic trains that have been developed recently, considering they've said that fuel consumption is what leads to climate change. And then the opposers have been asked, and the other activities that they claim lead to climate change directly proportional to the increase in human population. Proposer number three, you have three minutes to answer the question. Charles Oino is your name? Barunga School is a school. Somebody has asked a question. How? Is human population increase a factor that leads to fuel consumption? Well, this is simple as arithmetics. People increase. There's need for more food consumption. There's need for construction of more industries. I don't know why you fail to reason. Fuel consumption. Let us say that human beings increase. The level of fuel consumption that was there in 1996 is not the same fuel consumption that we have right now in 2018. You commented about electric cars. Fine, there are electric cars, I agree with you. But how many countries in the whole of this world have adopted the knowledge of electric cars and magnetic trains? Only the developed countries. And in the whole world, a few countries are developed. I stand here firm enough to propose the motion Increase in population is detrimental, and I repeat, is detrimental to the fight against climate change. Climate change is there. What is this climate change? Climate change is the gradual metamorphic effects that lead to the change in the nature of the climate that is composed of the hydrosphere, biosphere, ionosphere, lithosphere, atmosphere inclusive when it was created as the religious center, the religious center centered countrymen believe so, or as the geographers believe, when the earth was formed. That climate system is a balance between the amount of energy the sun receives from the sun, from the, the, the amount of energy the earth receives from the sun, and the amount of energy radiated back into the space. Increase in population, ladies and gentlemen, I need to open your eyes, open them real wide, to see that increase in population is actually a factor that is causing us not to succeed in the fight against climate change. Our beautiful and handsome opponents are against the motion. 
Well, when I entered onto this stage, I saw one of them, beautiful, as a prosperous wife. But after listening to what she has to say, I came up with one thing. If this is how we are going to live in our house, if a rat, a simple rat, dies in our house, then I ask you, excuse me, what is not happening in our house? Why can't we live comfortable? Then you say that my stinking clothes are the ones that are causing discomfort in our home. Why do you want to conceal the fact that we only have a rat, a dead rat in our house that is making us not to live comfortable? And with that, I only have one option for you. I'm not boarding. Actually, vegetation destruction is a, is a factor that leads us not to fight against the climate change. Land fragmentation, that is the division of land. We divide the land so that we can accommodate a large number of population in the country or as in the world. When you subdivide the land, it, lose, it loses its fertility. With that, the vegetation destruction is evident. And we know very well that vegetation helps in the curbing amount of carbon dioxide emitted in the atmosphere. I rest my case. Dr. Puzo, you have three minutes to respond to your question. Thank you. Gerard Faith from Uzalendo School, ready to oppose the motion that states that increase in population is detrimental to climate change. I will first want to ask my colleague from the, from the proposing side, how is rats associated with this motion? I thought you are talking about climate change. I want to answer my question. My, my colleague from Anessa, I think Premium, asked that, how is, how, if these human activities are not involved in population growth? Yes, I, I, say, I want to say that human activities are part of population growth. And here, remember, our argument is that population increase is in conjunction with human activities. But these human activities that we are talking about are not the only factors that are detrimental to climate change. Remember, we have very many factors out there. We have volcanic eruption. We have global warming, and many others. But increase in population is not only detrimental to climate change. My fellow colleagues here say that uh, population pressure is the only detrimental factor to fight against climate change. But what about you colleagues? What about the other factors? What about uh, technological advancement? Are they not, are they not detrimental? Huh? Do, do they not cause any harm? to the climate, to the fight. In fact, here we are talking about fight against climate change. Are they? So, please think about it. I rest my case. Proposition, you have one minute for a final submission. The best way of curing or helping a, a patient with a disease is not adding a medicine containing the disease, but otherwise adding or introducing an antidote to the disease. I woke up this morning, powerful. When I came about this motion, I was emotional. How could I live in this world and I expect to live? If God enables me, I live for 100 years. If population increase is the reason why we can't fight climate change, it means that we cannot have a world to live in if we happen that we ignore the fact that population increase is what is causing the fight is what is causing us not to fight the climate change. As I said before, climate change has to be stopped. And for us to live, we have to stop it. And we cannot go about saying that other factors have caused it. It's very evident that population increase is the main cause as to why we cannot eradicate this climate change. I rest my case. Opposition, you have one minute for final submission. Back on stage is Gerald Faith, still firmly opposing the motion, stating that increase, increase in population to the fight against climate change, uh, no, sorry, increase in population is detrimental to the fight against climate change. Yes, we agree that demographic patterns, such as population increase, contributes to this fight against climate change. But our argument is, what about El Nino and La Nina? What about volcanic eruptions? What about variation in Earth's orbital, orbital characteristics? Those are also factors that hinder them, other than population increase. So my colleagues in the proposing side, I will just 
ask whether you could second with us, take it as a challenge. Let's make a bridge between these two rivers for you to cross over and join us in the opposing side. I rest my case. <laughs>
Very passionate. I think you're very passionate. That is commendable. We could not dispute that. However, I would have loved to hear and expand more on the technological advancements that you gave as an example. I would have really loved to hear what they're doing towards climate change. All the best to both of you. Ladies and gentlemen, our judges have decided and they have awarded Uzolendo High School 63%. Let's give them a round of applause. Baringo High School have been awarded 65% in making them the winners of this debate. Congratulations to both teams for a job well done. Thank you for the presentation today to both teams on stage. Please keep the conversations going on our social media platforms, hashtag GDC for SDGs. That's it at the Great Debaters Contest. I have been your host, Esperancia Kapanga. And I am Chris Boru. Until next time, stay tuned.